What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to Rainbow Six Siege. And today I want to make a tip guide, kind of a beginner's guide for all the new players out there. Because there's tons of new players coming to the game day in and day out. Of course, I play on console uh, on PS4, but it does not matter if you play on PS4, Xbox, or PC. These are going to kind of be just some general tips that I have learned over the last several years of playing. Now, I'm not insanely great at the game. I'm just decent at the game. But a lot of this stuff is going to be general information that I wish I kind of have known I guess when I first started playing, the first few things I can tell you is the game's going to be difficult to start out. It's not your normal shooter. If you're used to playing Battlefield, if you're used to playing Call of Duty, it's a good bit different than those type games. It's a little bit different pace. It's a little bit more tactical. And of course, you don't have auto aim if you're on console. You'll have to be used to not having auto aim. So there's a lot of things that you need to learn going into because there's a pretty good, a large skill gap. Uh, or a large learning curve just in general. The next thing I can tell you is you're going to get destroyed to begin with. Everybody got destroyed to begin with. Don't you know, get down or, or upset because you're just getting beat round after round, game after game, because everybody experienced that. Like I said, it's got a pretty good size learning curve, so it's kind of difficult to learn to play. The next thing I can tell you is do not sprint all the time. There's no need to be sprinting nonstop. Uh, most games like Call of Duty or Battlefield have very quick you know, ADS kind of from sprint this game does not. If you're going to sprint and go into a room, you're not going to be able to ADS in time to be able to beat most enemies. You might every once in a while, but nine times out of ten, you're going to get beat because the ADS from sprint is kind of slow. You want to be playing almost paranoid, I would say. You want to be going around corners. ADS, you know, if you can turn, you know, you can you can lean left or right, so you always can kind of get an angle. But just know if you're sprinting into a room, somebody is probably already kind of on an angle watching and waiting for you because you are very loud when you walk. You're extremely loud when you sprint. So just be aware if you're sprinting, they're going to hear you. And if you're sprinting, you're not going to be able to get your gun up in time to beat most people. If they played for a long time, they're a pretty good shot. They're going to be able to gun you down before you can get your gun up. So don't sprint unless it's absolutely necessary, like at the end of the round, if the timer's running out. Or if you know a room's clear, you can move through it very quickly. Uh, the other thing I can tell you is find a few operators on offense. Find a few operators on defense. Learn their gadgets. Learn the recoil of their weapons. That way... You can kind of get a feel for the game and not have to be worried about learning every operator in the game. That was one of the things that I did when I first started playing. I started switching operators, switching operators. I never really got the feel for, you know, just a, a handful of operators and find something that I might like, you know, or just kind of to learn, like I said, to learn the gadgets or to learn how the weapons uh, recoil works. In my opinion, if you swap operators a lot, you're going to have a harder time than if you just find a few on offense and a few on defense and stick with them until you kind of have those down pat and you can move on to some new operators. The next thing I would say is use your drones wisely, but drones are absolutely a necessity in this game. Information is key. A lot of people, when the round first starts, of course, on offense, you have a drone to go find the area that everybody is at, you know, the area that you're going to attack. And a lot of people stay in there and mark, you know, targets over and over. In my opinion, the best thing you can do is as soon as you find the area or someone else finds the area, back your drone out to a window, to a door that you're going to go in at, the area that you're going to start out at when attacking, or bring it back outside and pick it up. That way you will have two drones because if that drone gets destroyed, you're only going to have one more in your inventory for the entire round. And like I said, information is key. It is best to drone out areas. If you have two drones, that's going to give you a lot of information that the defenders do not have. So play smart with those drones. I know a lot of people will leave them in the leave them in the room. They'll get shot. They'll get destroyed, and then you, you only have, like I said, one one drone to kind of go throughout the round. And a lot of people don't even use that one they have. So always make sure you're using your drones. Drone areas out. You have time. You'll kind of learn the time of the game. You will learn when you can drone, when you can't drone. But just be smart with those drones and don't get them destroyed too quickly. Don't block yourself or teammates in rooms. I know when a lot of people start playing, that is that one thing that they. They know the game has got barricades. Each player has two barricades. They can barricade walls up. But a lot of players that are near are going to barricade just everywhere. Um, if you don't know where to barricade, ask someone in the chat. A ask someone, if you're playing with friends, ask them where to barricade. Because a lot of new players will barricade areas uh, on bomb, like there's an A-bomb and a B-bomb. They will barricade the wall in between the rooms. You really don't want those, uh, those walls barricaded. You want only certain places barricaded to kind of slow the enemy down. But if you barricade too much and block yourself in a room it's going to make it very easy for the attackers to get to that area because you're going to be just stuck there. There's nowhere else you can go. So just be careful. Don't block yourself in or block your teammates in. A lot of people will run the operator castle on defense, block certain doors that don't need to be blocked. So like I said, if you, do not, if you do not know, just ask because people will tell you. Now I know you're going to get some trolley people that might be 
you know, kind of smart aleck about it or assholes about it, excuse my language, but uh, that's just kind of in every game. But you will find people also that will be helpful. So just ask if you do not know because you don't want to get stuck in a room where the offense can kind of get to you a lot easier. And that kind of goes with the next point is move around the map. You don't have to sprint to the other side of the map, but if you kind of hold angles around the area that you're defending, it makes it a lot more difficult for the uh, attacking team to get to you. You want to be able to slow that attacking team down. Even if you do not kill everyone on the attacking team, if the timer runs out, guess what? You're still going to win that round. So you do not have to necessarily sit right in the room. It's always a good idea to have a couple people around the room and a couple people roaming further off. If you're new to the game, I would suggest just staying around the room, holding certain angles, watching certain windows, doors, listening for sound cues. But you do not have to stay right in that certain you know area that you're in when you start. You can kind of move around the map. That is always a good idea, in my opinion. And last but not least, this is a, a thing that I say in every tip video that I make. Never, ever chase targets. No matter what shooter you're playing, chasing targets is a horrible idea. And in Siege, is even worse. If you're on offense, if you're on defense, it does not matter. If you get a couple bullets in them, they get around the corner, there's no need to chase them. They're going to have to go somewhere. Somebody else is going to get them. You'll be able to sit there and hold an angle and get them when they come back. Or maybe be able to kill them when they come back. But if you chase targets... They're most likely going to go around the corner, be waiting on you, or lead you into a room where there's more of their teammates waiting. So never chase targets is always a bad idea. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped you out. Of course, if you liked the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a new subscriber, click the bell icon in the top right corner. If you have a chance, share the video. It does help out the channel a lot. And be sure to check out GT Racing. They are the affiliate on the channel. All their information is linked in the description. I'll catch you next time. Peace.